more efficient <laughs> Guys, I'm so tired. I don't know how to start this video anymore. So I spent the whole night working on my game Milky Way Link. Follow Milky Way Link. I'll put the link in the description. And I want to show you something really interesting because I've been using this pattern for like five years already, and it just gets better because I make it so that it's now a component that I can reuse across many, many projects. So one of the main things that we do when we are making a game is to dynamically create things based on the game state right and we need to put these things inside the game world so it's not only about creating objects in the back end making some dynamic stuff instantiating some stuff in the back end but also putting these things in the game world so visible to players right and to do that we need to create the instance to position it to add it as a child we need to know what we are creating right so we need to know the packet scene in case of good engine or if you are using another another engine the equivalent to a packet scene and this process can be very repetitive and if you scatter this process across many classes this can become a headache to work with if you need to make some small changes so let's say that instead of um, just adding a, a an object you also need to for instance in my case to inject a quest on it this can be become a very tedious job but using a spawner you can do that very efficiently and in this video i want to show you how you can create a spawner that will leverage the power of the factory pattern so let's understand how this works a spawner is fundamentally fundamentally an object that controls what when and where an object is placed in the game world so a spawner is a node 2d an object that has a position and a translation and a scale in the game world itself and it will use this transform to position its children inside of it or its creation so the, the spawnings or in the case of the in terms of the factory pattern the product this process can be something very specific like for enemies so we can create a enemy spawner for instance we see this in minecraft right we have all of these skeleton spawners the spider spawners and stuff like this but what if i told you that a gun like a weapon is nothing but a bullet spawner if you need to create an object you just need to use a spawner let me show you how i did that in my game so here i have this the milky way mailing headquarter and i have here this asteroid spawner which is basically a container for a lot of for like four other objects and each one of them has a role in the assembling line of the the specific asteroids that i need for this case because these asteroids are going to be used for a quest so i have <laughs> guys this is something that I, when i talk about when i told my friend about it he was like why did you do that this this is so simple to do you just need to make a new script and like add a for loop right but i created this counter object exactly to well leverage the power of having objects this is a counter which is specialized in basically count, <laughs> count how many times like count iterations right so it is a for loop that counts a given amount of time and each one of the iterations it emits a signal so counted right and i can use this signal to create objects so i'm connecting the counted signal to the spawn or actually the create um, method of the, the spawner so this will make it so that every time this counter counts it will spawn a new object in this case spawn a new asteroid so let me show you how the spawner works this is it this is basically it so it has uh note that the factory pattern the factory pattern typically is a design pattern that asks you to pass all the necessary objects to assemble the new object so in most of the applications you need to create the the components in real time and assemble the component in real time and add it as a dependency inject it as a dependency for other objects but since in Godot engine we have what we know as a packet scene which already has all this structure and all the relationship of the objects we can basically just use the the packet scene as the the argument for the creation method so the factory pattern is basically a object that is special an object that is specialized into creating objects and 
making a process, processing them so that we don't have to repeat this project, scattering these pro this, this processes across our project. In this case, what my Node2D factory, which is a spawner, does is that it will always take this object and it will take its position and set it to the position of the spawner itself and it will add it to a container. So a container is basically, let me show you here in the level. So you can see that we have these ores, asteroids, enemies, bullets, labels. These are the containers that I'm talking about, right? It will add its product as a child of the container. If it doesn't found, if it doesn't, if it didn't find any container, it will add it as um, its own child, right? It will also do some other procedures like setting the product to top level and uh, the Z index to the same index as the container. It keeps some transforms, some vis visibility properties of the, the container, but it will be a top level node as well. And then I call the feared because sometimes I get this error. Of, oh, this should be called the fear because you are dealing with some physics process and don't do that in the same frame as the physics process. I don't know. So I use the, the call the fear instead of just directly add it as a child. And after that, it emits a, a signal telling that, hey, this object was created. If anyone is interested in, in this object, please do something with it and it also returns the, the, the product. So the product is the object. So this is these are the terminology that we use when we talk about the factory pattern. The factory is an object that assembles products, right? So this is the terminology that we use when we talk about the factory pattern. The object that it creates is the product, okay? By doing that, guys, this is so, so, so powerful because this allowed me to do uh, this process that I'm showing. So I have a counter object that creates a given amount of products using the, the spawner. And when the spawner creates this object, it will pass through using a signal. So it has this created signal, right? It will pass these objects to the radio posi position randomizer, which is this object right here, where I can, well, draw where these objects should be position, right? So I have this, these two radios, so the inner radio, inner radius and the other radios, and these objects will be in, uh, positioned within this arc right here. So this is what this radio position randomizer does. It will randomize the position of these objects within this arc. Yeah, within this arc. <laughs> I'm so... I'm so tired, I don't know how to, to speak, guys. And after that, the, the spawner will also pass these objects to the quest project, the quest progress injector, which is a, a an object that will inject an object that I have that is a quest progress, which basically this object will increase the progress of a quest. So you can you can see that here I have the quest ID which it will use to know to inject the to create the quest progress and tell hey you are a, a quest progress of this specific quest right here and also it asks for an object that will trigger the progress of the, the increasing of this this quest and also it asks for a signal in this object that will trigger this so in my case i have a, a health resource that has a signal called deplete so basically when the asteroid dies trigger the quest progress that we are creating and this is how i assemble these specific asteroids but note that all of this is uh, possible because i have here the product package scene that points to an asteroid that is this scene right here asteroid scene well it will create 10 asteroids of these and will inject this quest progresses in this object so basically that's it but not only that because with the same object with the same spawner i also have a weapon and as i said a weapon is a bullet spawner so i have a bullet spawner here which will tell the weapon hey i created a bullet do something uh, with that and basically what the weapon will do is to set the global rotation of the bullet uh, based on the global rotation of the weapon so that the bullet will follow where the weapon is, is pointing to and that's it so if i close I, i'm not going to save that because i don't remember what i did but if i play this right now you can see that well i will create some asteroids here each one of these asteroids 
is part of this mission, so this quest. So if I trigger the quest, hi, you are in the new career, okay, yeah, okay. So some productivity and destroy these asteroids, five asteroids, right? So you can see that now I have this navigation's arrow pointing where are the, the mission goals, so the quest goals, and I can destroy them, two, three, and you can see that the bullets are also working. Four. I have to recharge because I lost all my energy. Five. Yeah. So you can see that everything worked and is dynamically. It happens uh, dynamically. And I'm, I'm using this same pattern across all of my, my objects. So if I open the headquarters, the headquarter. You can see that I also have uh, an enemy radio spawner, which is a spawner that will create enemies around the headquarters so that the player needs to defeat them. And I'm talking about in terms of patterns because I consider the, the spawner pattern, the, this pattern that I'm just that I just showed you, as a personal pattern that I'm use that I use across all my projects. Ever since I launched my first book, so the top seven good patterns, growth recipes. Uh, I'll put the link in the description for this book as well. It's five bucks, so I highly recommend it. I have to make a new version because it was made for growth 3, but yeah, I will make some <laughs> someday I'll release a version for growth 4, but I'm using the same pattern ever since I wrote this book, so ever since 2022, so three years already, but I used this recipe even back, way back before ever since I worked in GDQuest. So I was a core member of the GDQuest team. And ever since like 2018, I've been using the same recipe. So this is the power of leveraging design patterns. You can make a component and reuse it <laughs> infinitely across many projects because it's self-contained and it does one single thing at a time. If you like this video, don't forget to leave a thumbs up and to subscribe as well. And if you need help with your personal issues, I will recommend you to get one of my missions. So I have the mission start path, which is my personal consultancy uh, service, which I, I'm going to help you fix the issues of your specific project. You can leverage, as I said, nine years of good experience from me. I have launched four books already and have more than 30 successful projects under my belt. So I have already 30 uh, consultancy customers through this same consultancy here, which previously was from PigDev, but now it's from Lunar, right? And if you need me to take your hand and to have like personalized uh, projects, so I have my, my mission, Celine, which is a six months long mentorship that I'm going to take you by hand and guide you through the process of making a game using all of these patterns, so design patterns, the solid principles, the fundamentals of object-oriented programming as well, game design principles, and launching a game on Steam, which is what I'm doing in my other company. <laughs> so this is why I'm so tired. But that's it. Thank you so much for watching. Keep developing and until the next time, good night guys.